Your Honor, we call uh, Travis McGivern by video link. Uh, all right. Mr. McGivern, can you hear me? I can. All right. Can you do me a favor and just count to five for me so I can get you to pop up on my big screen here? One, two, three, four, five. All right, now can you turn your camera on? Yeah, I thought it was on. There we go. Yes, sir, now I can see okay. you. If you could raise your right hand, sir. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth under penalty of law? Yes, I do. All right, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning, Mr. McGivern. Good morning. Could you please state your full name for the record? Travis Edward McGivern. And where do you currently live? Los Angeles, California. Where are you testifying from today? Los Angeles, California. What is your current occupation? I am a security professional. And how long have you been a security professional? Hmm. Roughly 16 years, a little over 16 years. Do you know the plaintiff in this case, Johnny Depp? Yes, I do. How do you know Mr. Depp? I've worked for Mr. Depp for a little over nine years. And what's your position for Mr. Depp? Security professional, um, personal protection. When did you first start working for Mr. Depp? March of 2013. And when did you first meet Mr. Depp? <clears throat> Couldn't say for sure. Um, probably sometime around then, March or April 2013. What do you do as a member of Mr. Depp's security team? Um, residential security, estate security, if he's in L.A., um, uh, when he's in L.A., if he wants to go anywhere, I'll, I'll take him wherever he wants to go. I have um, protected his children before. Um, yeah, just basically ensure the safety and well-being of Mr. Depp and his family. And are you currently employed for Mr. Depp? I am. What other means of employment do you have? Um, so, Mr. Depp's travel schedule is pretty regular. So when he's not in town, um, work slows down a little bit. So I have actually in the last six months, just under six months, picked up a full-time job um, working for another client. When you first started working for Mr. Depp, how often would you see him in person? Hard to say. When, when he's in town, I saw him on a daily and or nightly basis. I work nights mostly. Um, Obviously, when he's out of town, that, that changes. But, um, yeah, when he's in town, pretty much daily. When did you first meet Miss Hurd? Mm. Again, I couldn't give you an exact date, but I would say sometime in 2013, maybe summer 2013. And when you were working for Mr. Depp, how often would you see Ms. Hurd when they were in a relationship? In the beginning, not very often. Uh, at one point, they moved to downtown LA to the Eastern Columbia building and became a little more frequent. Uh, when Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd were staying at the Eastern Columbia building together, how often would you actually be in their apartment with them? Uh, 
That would vary uh, depending on the situation, but um, a few times a week would be my, my best estimate. It, again, it depended on what was going on and there'd be nights where I wouldn't see them at all. There'd be nights where, where I would. Um, best, best estimate would be a few times a week. During that time, did you have occasion to see Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd interacting with each other? I did, yes. And how often would you estimate? No, anytime I was in there, they were typically interacting. So I'd say a few, few times a week, several times a week. How would you describe the interactions between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd? Um, it would depend, I mean, they were, it would depend. Sometimes they were super loving, super, um, happy. And then the next night they could be arguing. And, um, initially when we first, uh, when I first started working down at the lofts, that uh, things were cool. Um, more than more than moving forward um things got a little more volatile moving in the longer they were there when did you start noticing more arguments between mr depp and miss heard so i want to say like the end of 2014 they started staying down there pretty regularly <sighs> There were a few incidents where there were fights, um, but March 2015, when when they came back from Australia, was when I really started to notice notice a change. And how often would you witness arguments or fights during that time? <clears throat> from in in March. Yeah, from March and thereafter. So when they came back from Australia, the, the arguments were pretty regular. Um, wouldn't say nightly, but every other night, uh, several times a week, there there would be arguments. And what did you observe Travis in the- McGivern, argument? security uh, team member for Johnny Depp. We need to slip in a break here. We're gonna pick it up right where we left off. You won't miss any of the testimony. Stay with us. Calls.com for a limited time offer. One of the last witnesses, final witnesses for Johnny Depp's case in chief is on the stand this morning. He's suing, of course, Amber Heard for $50 million. She is counter suing for a hundred million on the stand, Travis McGivern. He is a member of Johnny Depp's security team. Let's get you back right where we left off. And what did you observe in the arguments that you personally witnessed? So it was typically, I would come in uh, I'd be, I'd get a text from Mr. Depp. I would go to penthouse three, which is where they stayed. Um, either stay by the door, uh, as requested or in the kitchen. Um, and then, I mean, it was just verbal, verbal arguments. Um, yelling uh it was typically mr depp wanting to get out of there and so there was the try trying to convince miss heard to, to let us leave and um yeah i mean lots of name calling lots of That was typically misheard uh, directing her feelings toward Mr. Depp. And what do you recall Ms. Heard saying in those instances? Oh dear. Um, 
It would vary, and to be honest, I, I tried to not pay attention. I was just there to get Mr. Depp out of there, but, um, you know, there were times I've heard Miss Heard call him a... How would you describe your own interactions with Ms. Hurd in the time that you worked for Mr. Dub? Jackson relevance. All right. What's the relevance of his interactions? The, uh, his interactions when he was involved in the, when he was witnessing these altercations. Well, if you want to ask that question. Okay. That's fine. How would you describe your interactions with Ms. Hurd when you were present during an altercation between her and Mr. Dub? For the most part, there wasn't really interaction. Um, there was there were a few times where um, I was trying to get Mr. Depp away from the situation, and Miss Heard didn't like my involvement in the situation, um, and she, on one occasion, let me know how she felt about about that. And what did she say to you in that instance? A, a lot. It was a, a lengthy, um, one-sided conversation. Um, but she basically demeaned my career choice. You know, she was like, how would, you, how would you feel if someone was involved in your relationship? Which I sympathize with. Um, but, yeah, she, she definitely threw some shade on me and, and my chosen career. Now, you mentioned that um, the arguments between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd increased when they returned from Australia in March 2015. Um, when did you first see Ms. Hurd when she returned from Australia? So I picked Ms. Hurd up from the airport on March 9th. Um, yeah, that was, that was the first time I saw her when she got back. And who else was with her? A gentleman named Ben King, who I later found out, I didn't know who he was initially, but uh, later found out he was the house manager, property estate manager of the, the place they were staying at in Australia. How would you describe Ms. Hurd's demeanor when you picked her up at the airport? She seemed normal, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, she was pleasant, she was polite, like, like she usually was. How much time did you spend with Ms. Hurd that day? Um, not a lot, but at least the car ride from LAX to downtown LA, to the lofts. Um, couldn't tell you how long that took, but probably 45 minutes to an hour. Um, I believe I escorted them or helped them up to Penthouse 3 and was maybe in there for very, very briefly, a minute or two, and then, um, and then I left. So overall, uh, let's, let's estimate an hour. And how close to you, how close to Miss Heard were you that day? I mean, in the car where I'm driving, she's in the, the seat right behind me to my right. So there's a few feet there. I think when I picked him up, I don't remember if I hugged her or not, but I know I probably grabbed some luggage. So I was, I was within a few feet. And what time of day was it when Ms. Hurd arrived at the airport? 
early afternoon. Um, I want to say they landed at around 1 p.m. What, if any, injuries did you observe on Miss Heard that day? I didn't notice any injuries. When did you first see Mr. Depp when he returned from Australia in March 2015? I don't know, to be honest. Um, I know it was after Miss Heard came, but I couldn't give you an exact date. And what, if any, injuries did you observe on Mr. Depp when he returned from Australia? So Mr. Depp had his hand, his right hand, um, heavily wrapped. I didn't actually see an injury, but his hand was, um, was wrapped. Now you mentioned that um, the arguments between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd increased after they returned from Australia. Um, what arguments do you recall specifically? Um, one in particular stands out. Um, March 23rd. Uh, a couple weeks after they got back, um, there was a, an incident in Penthouse 5 that I recall. And when did you start your shift that day? <clears throat> 11 p.m. was typically my start time. And where were you on your shift? So we, at the lofts, there was um, kind of a makeshift command post, CP, or uh, guard shack, or whatever it's called, um, that was in a storage room connected to Penthouse 5 via a patio. So you'd leave Penthouse 5, go to a patio, and then our CP was connected to that patio. That's typically where we hang out during during our shifts. And what time were you? Need a slip and a break. We'll pick up right where we left off. Stay with us. Made like no other. Court TV cameras are in Fairfax, Virginia, in the courtroom for the dual defamation cases between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, Johnny Depp's bodyguard. Travis McGivert is on the, well, he's testifying video via video link. He says he never saw any injuries on Amber Heard, especially when she returned from Australia. Let's go back right where we left off. And what time were you first contacted by Mr. Depp that evening? Again, I can't say precisely, but um, between four and probably around 4 a.m., 4.30, maybe. And what did you do after Mr. Depp contacted you? So when he, he texted me and um, I was downstairs. I don't remember exactly what I was doing, either getting some air, stretching my legs, or grabbing some food. Um, but I remember getting the text. I wasn't in the CP when I got the text. Um, he requested I meet him at Penthouse 5 and requested that I bring the nurse, his nurse that was working um, at that time with him. What was her name? Debbie Lloyd. Okay. And so what did you, did you um, go get Miss Lloyd? I did. So Miss, Miss Lloyd was staying at a hotel um, close by, probably about a half block away. And being that I was already down there, I felt uh, four in the morning, I wasn't gonna, and Mr. Depp wouldn't have wanted me to have her walk by herself. Um, but I wasn't gonna go get the truck either since I was down there already. So 
I walked over to the hotel. I, I believe I called the nurse just to make sure she woke up. Um, and then I walked to the hotel and I met her there. We walked over together to the Eastern Columbia building. Um, in the lobby, we ran into Miss Heard. She was at the front desk talking to security or concierge. I'm not sure who. Um, Miss Lloyd stayed downstairs with Miss Heard. I proceeded upstairs to meet Mr. Depp at Penthouse Five as requested. Um, was hoping to get him out of there before Miss Heard came back up um, just why because of past it. Sorry, why, sorry, why was that? Just because past experiences when they would argue she would try to prevent us from leaving um, to the point, I mean, she's held the elevator before, she's physically tried to keep Mr. Depp from leaving by grabbing his arm or standing in front of him. Um, I just wanted to get out of there to avoid that. And what happened when you got upstairs to the penthouse? So Mr. Depp was sitting in front of the, the front door of penthouse five. Um, I agree, he had some bags, I believe, like he was ready to go. Um, I greeted him, kind of got a feel for what was going on tried to get him out of there. Um, as we were getting ready to leave, Miss Heard and Miss Lloyd exited the elevator on the penthouse level. So they came back up and um, Mr. Depp and Miss Heard decided they wanted to continue whatever conversation they were having. So I let them into penthouse five. Um, Myself, Miss Lloyd, Mr. Depp, and Miss Heard entered Penthouse Five. I tried to stay out of their conversations as long as they were peaceful. So they were having a, a relatively peaceful conversation. So Miss Lloyd and I stood outside the door of Penthouse Five, had the door propped open um, to make sure we could hear what was going on, but kind of giving them their space. Uh, initially. And you said initially, what happened after that? So the conversation um, got a little louder, got a little more volatile. So Miss Lloyd and myself entered Penthouse Five um, just to be around um, to hopefully be able to not necessarily mediate, but just to be there. Um, so yeah, entered, stood a little closer to Mr. Depp. And what did you observe when you went back into the penthouse? So the argument continued. Um, there were moments of kind of normal conversation, uh, peaceful conversation, but then there were also moments of uh, yelling and anger from, from both of them. Um, and at some point I witnessed Miss Heard throw a Red Bull can. So the loft is three levels. Um, Mr. Depp was down at the lower level, which is the kitchen area. There's a middle level, which is was turned into an office for Miss Heard. And then the upper level was where the bedrooms were, but they were turned into a closet, basically, for Miss Heard at that time. Um, Miss Heard and her sister at that time, um, Whitney had had come in. They were both on the the middle level, the office level. Um, and I, I saw Miss Heard throw a Red Bull can from her position um, that struck Mr. Depp in the back. Anything else that you recall? 
at that point, I moved closer to Mr. Depp. I didn't care um, that I was in the middle of their conversation at that point. I didn't want my client getting hit with anything else. So I stood right by Mr. Depp. Um, the verbal... Uh, onslaught continued from from both of them. Um, Mr. Depp was giving as good as he got at that point. Um, he was he was angry and agitated. Um, at one point, Miss Heard threw something else, uh, either a purse or some sort of bag or something that she had up there. Um, I was able to knock it away so it didn't hit him. At one point, she spit at him. Um, yeah, and then just just a lot of a lot of verbal vitriol from both of them. What do you remember, Miss Heard, saying to Mr. Depp on this occasion? Jeez. Uh, <laughs> Anything and everything. Um, specifically, there was the... It was... Um, it was pretty the and how did mr depp respond to miss hurd's behavior oh he was mad he was upset um especially after she tried to spit on him um at one point, Miss Hurd and her sister left um, Penthouse 5. I imagine they went into Penthouse 4 or possibly over to Penthouse 3. I don't know. They were all adjoining. Mr. Depp um, went upstairs and rearranged her closet for her, um, threw down probably every rack of clothing and shoes um, through one, at least one down the stairs. Um, yeah, he, he, he was upset. Where was Miss Hurd? Ms. McGivern regaling the jury with stories of Amber Hurd and Johnny Depp fighting it out, and he was witnessing it all more. Testimony right after this commercial break. Stay with us. Five. Back to the courtroom we go. Travis McGivern is a security team member for Johnny Depp. He is testifying via video from Los Angeles. We'll pick it up right where we left off. Where was Miss Heard when Mr. Depp rearranged her closet, as he said? Can't say for sure, but she was not in Penthouse 5. She was either in 4 or 3. And you mentioned Miss Heard's sister, Whitney. Do you recall when she arrived in the evening? So Whitney wasn't there when we first all walked into Penthouse 5. Um, when Miss Lloyd and I stepped out to give them some space, she must have, <laughs> excuse me, she must have come in at some point because she was in there when we got, when we walked back. Did you see Miss Heard again that evening after Mr. Depp was in her closet? I did, yeah. She must have heard what was going on and not been too pleased. So she shortly after re-entered um, Penthouse 5 as I was trying to get Mr. Depp out of there. And what happened at that point? So her and her sister both came back in. Um, we were on the... 
middle level, so her office level of, of Penthouse 5 at that point. Um, she was agitated. Mr. Depp was agitated. Uh, I felt it was time to get Mr. Depp out of the situation, so I stepped in between Miss Heard and Mr. Depp, um, telling Mr. Depp that we were that we were leaving and that it wasn't up to him anymore. Um, at that point, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a, a fist and an arm come across my right shoulder, and uh, I heard and saw a closed fist um, contact Mr. Depp in the left side of his face. And whose fist was that? That was Miss Heard's fist, Amber Heard's fist. And where was where was Whitney when this occurred? Can't say for sure, but I'm guessing, or my best guess is behind um, Amber. How did Mr. Depp respond when he was punched? <laughs> the initial look on his face. Um, kind of mirrored mine, uh, kind of a look of shock, like what just happened, where'd that come from? Um, at that point, uh, I wasn't gonna let Mr. Depp get hit anymore, so I moved him down the last flight of stairs to the lower level um, and told him we're leaving, it, like it wasn't, it wasn't up to him anymore. Um, just for his safety. I, I didn't, again, I had let him get hit by a Red Bull can. I let him get punched. My job is to ensure the safety and well being of my clients, and I felt like I hadn't done that. So um, it was my time to do my job and get him out of there. And so, uh, where did you go? So Ms. Hurd and her sister um, left Penthouse 5. Again, I don't know where they went. I'm assuming they went through Penthouse 4, were either in 4 or 3. Mr. Depp um, was not pleased with me, <laughs> naturally. Um, he went into the bathroom for a couple minutes. Miss Lloyd talked to him. Um, and they came out and agreed that it was time to leave. So as, as we were leaving the front door, uh, Mr. Depp got right in my face. He was wearing sunglasses. And uh, maybe not sunglasses, he was wearing glasses. Um, pulled him down, pointed to the left side of his face and told me that's your fault. And I agreed. Um, and then we proceeded to the vehicle and, and we left the loss. What did you see on the left side of Mr. Depp's face? Uh, it was, there was already a nice little, a nice little shiner. Um, definitely swollen and red. Uh, it wasn't black and blue yet, but it was definitely swollen and red. At any point during this in incident, did Mr. Depp throw anything at Ms. Heard? No. At any point, did Mr. Depp throw anything at anyone? No. At any time during this incident, did Mr. Depp physically respond to Ms. Heard? No. Do you recall uh, Miss Hurd's birthday party in April of 2016? I do. <laughs> uh, Mr. McGivern, during the incident we just discussed on March 23rd, um, what did Mr. Depp have on his right hand? <laughs> So he had the same bandage that he had um, when he arrived from Australia. So it was heavily wrapped 
Um, yeah, a heavily wrapped bandage. I don't know what was underneath, but it was it was definitely wrapped. Do you recall whether it was a hard or a soft cast? I do not. Okay. Now, moving forward to Miss Hurd's birthday party in April 2016. Um, were you present at that dinner party? I was not. Okay. Um, I started my shift again <clears throat> around 11 p.m. The party was going on in Penthouse 5. Um, I don't typically take part in get-togethers, um, so I think I probably hung out in the CP. Um, shortly after I got there, the party kind of winded down. Um, I believe Mr. Depp got there. He was late. Um, so I think he got there shortly after I started my shift. Um, he went into Penthouse 5. Again, the party wound down shortly thereafter. And then, as far as I know, Mr. Depp and Miss Hurd went back to Penthouse 3 um, shortly thereafter. Did you see Mr. Depp again that evening? That morning I did, early that morning, yeah. Uh, or the following morning. Um, again, I got a text. My best guess is around the same time, four. There were so many, so many incidences. Um, I, they're hard to keep straight, but um, probably around four or five that morning, requesting my presence in Penthouse Three. And how did? What did you do after you received that text message? Entered, went to Penthouse Three. And what did you need to get a break in here as we approach the top of the hour? We'll pick it up right where we left off. Stick with us. This is Court TV, your front row seat to justice. P200 now. At that point, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a, a fist and an arm come across my right shoulder and a I heard and saw a closed fist um, contact Mr. Depp in the left side of his face. And whose fist was that? That was Miss Heard's fist, Amber Heard's fist. And where was where was Whitney when this occurred? Can't say for sure, but I'm guessing, or my best guess is behind um, Amber. Welcome back to Court TV Live. Johnny Depp's legal team nearing the end of their witness list in this defamation case. Amber Heard expected to take the stand on Wednesday as the first witness when her team begins presenting its case. This morning, the jury is listening to testimony from Johnny Depp's bodyguard, Travis McGivren. Let's go back into court. He's testifying via video link from Los Angeles. And what did you observe when you went to Penthouse 3? Again, a verbal argument. Um, I think it was made clear that some phones had been thrown off, thrown out the window or something um, down to Broadway. Uh, Mr. Depp was again ready to leave to get out of the situation. He had his couple bags over his shoulders. Um, wanted to grab a few valuables that we always used to grab when this happened. Um, some framed letters from uh, either Hunter S. Thompson or Marlon Brando. Um, yeah, and then I, I believe uh, we left. Uh, I think I got him out of the situation again. We did look for the phone briefly, I think, on our way on our way back to West Hollywood. 
Um, but my main concern was getting him away from the situation. So I didn't find the phone. Um, and then we, we proceeded back to, back to his suites or properties. What do you recall about Ms. Hurd's demeanor that evening when you saw her? Nothing out of the ordinary, nothing that, I mean, they were, they were arguing like usual in those circumstances, but nothing, nothing pops out. What if any injuries did you observe on Ms. Hurd that evening? I didn't notice any injuries. In your time working for Mr. Depp, have you ever seen Mr. Depp physically abuse Ms. Hurd? I have not. Now, you mentioned a couple occasions. How many times have you witnessed Ms. Hurd be physically abusive towards Mr. Depp? Uh, obviously, the March 23rd thing in Penthouse 5. Um, Physically abusive, I don't, I don't know how to define that, but I have seen her physically try to prevent him from leaving before. So grabbing, grabbing his arms, standing in front of him, pushing him. Um, yeah, again, I don't know if that's physically abusive, but that I've definitely seen her touch him on multiple occasions. Have you ever observed Mr. Depp use any drugs? I have. And what drugs have you seen Mr. Depp use? Uh, are you talking non-prescription drugs? Yes. Marijuana and uh, cocaine. How many times have you seen Mr. Depp use marijuana? <laughs> Too many to count. I mean daily and how many times have you seen mr depp use cocaine a couple two how would you describe mr depp's demeanor when he's using marijuana uh, chill for lack of a better word um mellow uh, yeah, I, I don't know how to better describe it. Just super mellow. And how would you describe Mr. Depp's demeanor when you've seen him use cocaine? The same. Um, so I've seen him use it, like actual seen him use it a few times. I've, I've known of him using it other times, and I feel like it... it levels him out um yeah, I, I haven't noticed any difference when he when he's used it have you observed mr depp consume alcohol absolutely and how many times like marijuana too many to count pretty regularly and on how many of those occasions did Mr. Depp appear to be drunk? It would depend on what you mean by drunk, but not, not many. Um, the only time I would say I've seen Mr. Depp drunk was uh, when he would fall asleep on the couch sitting up with his boots on um other than that mr depp handles his liquor very well how would you describe mr depp's demeanor when you've seen him consume alcohol no no different than any other time again super super chill super mellow um Have you ever witnessed Ms. Hurd consume alcohol? I have. How many times would you estimate? <laughs> I 
again, too many to count. Um, she drank fairly regularly. Um, so I, I couldn't even give you a, a guesstimate. On how many of those occasions did you observe Miss Heard behaving drunk? Can't say I've, other than the, the incident on March 23rd where I didn't see her drinking, but I assume based on her behavior, um, she was drunk. Other than that, I can't say I've ever seen her uh, obviously drunk in my eyes. I have no further questions. All right, cross-examination, Mr. Rutenberg. All right, direct uh, examination over. We'll uh, see the cross uh, of the Travis, uh, of Travis McGivern. He is a security team member. He still works for Johnny Depp. So is he biased? Well, we'll see if that comes out on cross. Stay with us. Hillary with Worthy.com. We've heard the direct examination. Now it's time for the cross of Johnny Depp's bodyguard, Travis McGivern. Good morning, Mr. McGivern. Good morning, sir. So you've, you said you've worked for Mr. Depp for about nine years, right? Correct. And he's, he hasn't been in town recently, so you have another job. Is that what you said? Yes. But you still consider yourself an employee of his even today, correct? I do. And when you do work for Mr. Depp, he pays your salary, right? Not on salary. He pays my, my wage, yes. Okay. He pays the money that you make for working for him. Correct. And you've referred to him a few times during your testimony this morning as your client. Is that right? Yes. So when you're working security for Mr. Depp, it's Mr. Depp and Mr. Depp alone that is your client, correct? That is not correct. Well, in the, the altercation that you testified about with Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp, you referred to, to only Mr. Depp as your client, and it was your job to keep your client safe. Do you remember that? Objection compound. I'll allow that. Go ahead. I do. Okay. So at least in that instance, he was your client, not Ms. Heard, correct? Correct. Now, the evening of March 23rd, 2015, you actually walked into the middle of the argument with Debbie Lloyd, correct? Yes. So you testified earlier that you were downstairs and Ms. Hurd was downstairs in the lobby and you'd gotten Ms. Lloyd, but that's actually not accurate, is it? To the best of my recollection, that is accurate. In fact, when you and Ms. Lloyd entered Penthouse 5, Amber and Mr. Depp were already in there having a verbal argument, correct? That is not correct. May I approach, John? All right, yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. McGivern, do you see um, a document on the screen in front of you entitled Witness Statement of Travis McGivern? Uh, I do. Okay. And you... Well, let, let me ask you this. Is that your, is that your address below? document's pretty small. Is there any way for me to... Oh, there we go. Yes, it is. And that's, that's where you currently live? Hang on one sec. I'm sorry. That is a P.O. box. Okay. Is that yours? It is. Okay. Um, 
Now, this is a witness statement that you prepared on behalf of Mr. Depp uh, in the UK trial, correct? Yeah, the, the statement went away. Uh, there it is. You um, see it? Yes, it is. Okay. And who drafted this statement? Uh, myself, along with an attorney. I don't remember exactly who. Was it Adam Waldman? At that point, I don't believe it was, no. If you go to paragraph five, please, on the second page, and, and you understood when you wrote this statement that this was going to be submitted to the court in the UK trial that Mr. Depp brought, and that this was your testimony on behalf of Mr. Depp, correct? Yes. And about two-thirds of the way through paragraph five, there's a sentence that says, when Ms. Lloyd and I entered his residence, Ms. Heard and Mr. Depp were having a verbal argument. Is that correct? Did I read that right? That is, yes. So that doesn't say anything about you meeting Ms. Heard in the lobby of the Eastern Columbia building, does it? No, it does not. And when you entered the penthouse, you can't recall the specifics of what the argument was about, correct? You can take that down. <coughs> no, like what they were fighting about? Absolutely, right. no, I don't. And you don't know anything about what caused the argument in the first place, correct? I do not. But you do remember Mr. Depp being very angry, right? I remember both of them being very angry, yes. And you say that he gave as good as he got when it came to what they were saying to each other, right? Yes. You say they were both being verbally abusive to one another? Yes. And you testified that at some point, Ms. Heard, Ms. Heard was on the, the, the mezzanine level, right? The, the level of her office, so kind of the middle level of the penthouse? That's correct. And Mr. Depp was on the lower level, correct, when you entered the penthouse? So when Ms. Lloyd and I re-entered the penthouse, yes, that's where they were. And you weren't preventing Mr. Depp from leaving at any time, correct? Preventing him from leaving? I was encouraging him to leave. Right. And he could have, when he was on that lower level of the penthouse, he could have left at that point, correct? You wouldn't have prevented that. No, I would not have. And, but instead, at some point, he walked up to the mez mezzanine and, as you say, he rearranged Miss Hurd's closet, right? Well, that wasn't on the mezzanine level. That was on the top level. Um, but, yeah, he rearranged the closet. So he traveled up t two levels in the penthouse to throw down every rack of clothing that she had, right? I don't know about every rack, but he, he definitely threw down some racks of clothes and shoes. Okay, I, be, I believe you said every rack, so that's just why I was asking you to confirm that. You said he threw a rack down the stairs, correct? Yes. Okay. And then at that point, he went back downstairs? To the mezzanine level, yes. Now, that wasn't the only time you learned of Mr. Depp um, causing damage in Penthouse 5, correct? Couldn't say for sure. Uh, nothing, nothing's coming to mind. He had, uh, you said he had something on his hand from his injury that he sustained in Australia, right? Yes, his hand was wrapped. Now you weren't in Australia uh, with Mr. Depp and Miss Heard, correct? I was not. Okay. And what he had on his hand could have been a hard cast, correct? Sure. I have, I have no idea what was under the wrap. Okay. 
And isn't it true that while he was on the mezzanine level and Miss Heard uh, and, and her sister were there, that he was reaching for Amber's hair while he was trying to hit her with that cast, correct? That is not correct. And you say that you can't say for sure where Whitney was standing on the mezzanine level during this altercation, correct? That is correct. And it's it's possible that she was standing in between Mr. Depp and Miss Heard then, correct? No. Well, you say you can't say for sure where she was standing. So she could have been standing in between Mr. So Depp and Miss Heard, right? No, because I stepped in between Miss Heard and Mr. Depp. Um, so she definitely wasn't standing in between them. Well, in fact, you saw Mr. Depp uh, push or shove Whitney Heard, correct? Absolutely not. And it was only after Mr. Depp pushed Whitney that Amber stepped forward and punched him in the face. Isn't that right? That is not correct. Now, moving on to April 2016, you weren't there for the party, you said, correct? I, uh, I started my shift while the party was going on. But you weren't in with the party goers, you said, right? That's correct. And you, you said at some point, Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard went back to Penthouse 3. Um, but you have no idea what went on between them in Penthouse 3 while you weren't there, correct? I do not. And you said that you gave uh, security services to Mr. Depp primarily uh, in Los Angeles. Is that right? Yes. A little bit of travel, but mostly in, in L.A. Okay. Where did you travel to? Um, Vegas. Uh, up north, we did a road trip, kind of, they called it their honeymoon. Um, so Napa, San Francisco, Big Sur, um, San Jose. Uh, I've those are all with Miss Heard. I've taken Mr. Depp to China before. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah, and then a bunch of bunch of local stuff: Palm Springs, Santa Barbara, um, stuff like that. Okay. You weren't on a plane flight from Boston to Los Angeles with Mr. Depp and Amber in May 2014, correct? I was not. And you weren't at the Hicksville Trailer Palace in May or June of 2013, correct? With them? I was not. You, uh, you were never in the Bahamas with them, including in August 2014, correct? I was not. You were not in the Bahamas with them in December of 2015, correct? I was not. You were not in Tokyo with them in January of 2015, correct? I was not. You were not in the Eastern Columbia building with them on the evening of December 15th, 2015, correct? I don't know. Um, to the best of your were, recollection. Yeah, if they were at the lofts, I typically worked every night, but nothing about December 15th is popping into my head. Okay, and you definitely were not in the Eastern Columbia building with them on the night of May 21st, 2016, were you? I was not. Okay, um, nothing further. Thank you, Mr. McGill. All right, redirect. No, Your Honor. All right, is this Thanks, witness sir. subject to recall? <coughs> Uh, yes, Your Honor. All right, Mr. McGibbon, you're, you're subject to recall. So uh, just to let you know, uh, you're still subject to the rule on witnesses. So you cannot talk to anybody about your testimony or uh, watch any of the proceedings of this case. Okay, sir? All right, Travis Understood. McGibbon, right, uh, cross-examination is over. Ready for the next witness right after the break. Stay with us.